Is marriage a scam? Mm. That's the question we'll be throwing out to you today. Mm. All right. I read this article mm. and the lady was talking about her experience. She said when she was in a relationship with this gentleman, he treated her like a lady, mm. swept her off her feet, did all the romantic things you can think of. And she was really expectant you know, about marriage. Mm. Then they got married and suddenly everything stopped. Mm. It was like life was snatched out of the mm. relationship. And she reached the conclusion that marriage is a scam. Mm. Okay, that's one example. But well, generally speaking, why do you think a lot of people these days say marriage is a scam? I think? I think it's down to their experience. If I'm to talk... Mm from this lady's point of view mm. because people sometimes get into the relationship and they say uh, the person they met in the relationship is not the person they thought they were in a relationship with mm. so they conclude that marriage is a scam mm. but at that point i start asking myself shouldn't we be saying some people are scams mm. than say marriage mm. Mm. is a scam and it, another perspective to it. Fantastic. Yeah. Because like we always like to say mm. marriage is an institution mm. it's Moral, it's a uh, happy mm. day. It's a perfect institution. It's a perfect institution. Yes. I like the individuals who come into it yes. are less than perfect. So they're working towards improving themselves. So they decide how the marriage turns out. Yes. I'll, let you, I'll let you say something. Yes, I was just thinking about what you said. And um, another point of view I like to bring to you is sometimes people say marriage is scam because of the expectations they have about marriage. Mm. All right, so people think that being right. because you hear somebody say sometimes, Oh, we never disagreed, we never did. That is fine, all right. But when you have like a certain expectation mm. and you that expectation is not met, so let's say you have this expectation that your spouse will always know what you need without you communicating, and that's your definition of love that your spouse will always do something, that marriage will always be one thing. Mm. It might feel like a scam. Or because you have this expectation that you've built up from movies, from books, from experiences, all that all built up, and you just come to that point, and your marriage is maybe is meeting only 20% of your expectations. So 80% of your expectations are not met. Mm. It's likely to eat a few marriages is come. For example, when Hollywood is building the concept of relationship, love. They create this utopia that there is no issue at all. You just meet each other and just like each other. Mm -hmm. It's not often like that. Mm -hmm. There are real situations, there are bills to be paid, there are challenges that couples go through, mm -hmm. there are issues from in-laws, different financial issues, children issues. There are different kinds of things that happen. But the benefit of marriage is that both of you are able to now leverage your strength and achieve something phenomenal, conquer that. Sometimes people think marriage is a scam because those who are having a bad experience in marriage are louder than those who are having a good experience. Right, right. You know, uh, somebody close to me used to say something that the media itself thrives on negative news because the human nature likes to consume negative news. We, re we react faster to negative news. So, for example, you say or oh, negative news and something unusual, I should add. So, for example, someone says, hey, dog beat a boy. Everybody's like, oh, no, that's no more. Yeah. But if you hear something like, a boy beat a dog and the dog died, it's going to be headline news. Why? It's something different, something shocking. Mm -hmm. So, anytime people put an information out there, oh, I broke up with my partner, I broke up with my husband, I broke up with my wife, I decided to have, enjoy my truth, and you are hearing some of those narratives, it will gain traction algorithm will, will recognize it and push it to the top. More people will get to see this. So sometimes there are different dynamics. You might not know, but what you, you tell us in the comment section as well, why do you think people think that marriage is a scam? Or do you even think marriage Or do you even think, I wanted to make it soft a little bit. Or do you think that marriage is a scam? Yeah. Let us know why you think so. You might have very strong reasons. I would like to reason together. We don't know it all. Let's hear from your own point of view. So it's marriage is scam. A scam is something that looks glamorous, but underneath it has nothing to offer you, what to take from you. That's my definition of a scam. So is that your definition of marriage? It looks so beautiful, gorgeous on the outside, but underneath it, it will suck your life dry. All right. So another thing I'd like to say in summary on this before, you know, if you have something else to say as well, I wanted to say something like our, our perspective on an issue determines our experience. All right, some people don't, they don't like driving because they think driving is stressful. Mm 
for personal reasons. Some people enjoy it. anything, they will just want to get on behind the wheel. So that if it, they will not definitely not have the same perspective. Some people don't like parenting because they think, oh, children are expensive, children are troublesome, children are exhausted, they mess up your life, your plan. Some people like children and they have as many as six, seven, eight. I've seen a couple of first on social media. They have nine children. I was wondering, do they have any other thing they're doing? So people have different perspectives on the same issue. The issue is not a problem. It's our interaction and our perspective on the issue. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. Really, really brilliant. I think you nailed it. Okay, before we go on, <laughs> we need to introduce ourselves. Yeah. Thank you oh, for joining us. I am Chidi Akuna. Yeah, I'm always Victor Akuna. Always. If you're new to our <laughs> channel, best friend right there. foundation will <laughs> be your friend. Uh, please feel free to hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it. So yes. you know if I don't, we drop our content. At Foundation for Family Affairs, we talk everything romance intimacy um, and family um, you are in the right place absolutely so share this absolutely. video with as many people as mm -hmm. possible yes we know they'll get value from it absolutely yes okay so let's dive into this mm. now for people who get to that point where mm. they start thinking oh it's my marriage is scam mm. sometimes you we they take steps mm. and they approach us mm. and say okay we want to go on this training mm. that's because they have they still have a small mm. Fantastic. There's just a little percentage of belief left there. Mm. Uh, okay, let me give it a try and see. Mm. It does appear some people are enjoying this mm. thing, but I don't know why my case is different. Mm. So we have people who approach us and they enroll on our coaching program. Absolutely. To yes. build that mm. program. And it's usually very fulfilling, mm. fulfilling mm. to see that their lives change, their, mm. their marital life mm. change after, mm. after all. Mm. Okay, so there's still the possibility, but let's talk about it. Mm. When people get to that point, it's so brilliant to see that there are people who don't even get to that point, mm. but they just feel there are one or two things we need to do to just improve things in our marriage. Mm. And this is where we ex we encourage mm. couples to get to, you know, where you are proactive Fantastic. about your marriage. Fantastic. Yeah. This is so important because, you know, sometimes someone said, don't complain something you refuse to do something about don't complain about your marriage if you have refused to do something about it so i'm very we are often very happy yeah. when we see couples who are making effort who think we're not getting it right but the challenge might might be a knowledge gap mm -hmm. a skill gap that is something we can do they're not like i've done everything they're not training a towel and just taking that nonchalant attitude towards the issue and just say you know what We've done all. I can't be bothered right now. Let him do whatever he likes. Let her do whatever she likes. No, they are not in that kind of, um, um, res you know, resolved and just relaxed at my disposition around. They're thinking, maybe we're not getting something right. Maybe if somebody else comes to help us, maybe if we read something. You know, that disposition is one of the things that makes people succeed. Someone said the, the failure is not a problem. It's what you do after the failure. Some people think, you know what, I've been there, I've done that, I'm not moving forward. But somebody else is thinking, oh, maybe something I didn't do right. Maybe this situation wasn't quite right. What else can I learn from this? Can I bring this knowledge into this? What can I reflect? Those kind of query, same experience, but different disposition. Mm -hmm. All right, so two people may expect the same thing, but the reaction might be different. So anytime we see couples, who come to us, who visit our YouTube channel, yeah. who ask us questions, mm -hmm. who ask us to talk to their partner, you see that they want to do something mm -hmm. right. They think, believe that marriage is still beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the best things, I'm telling you. Curiosity, probing, finding, the same for anything you want to do. You keep pushing, you keep pushing. You change your strategy, but the goals remain the same. The goal is, I want a better marriage than what I have. I want a happy marriage than what I have to go but the strategy you go about it might differ okay. right, from time to time so i think we've just thrown in yes. our position on marriage yes. which is that marriage is beautiful absolutely and guess what anyone can have this beautiful experience absolutely anyone mm. it doesn't matter how bad you think mm. things are anyone can have this beautiful experience absolutely. we've seen people who say 
who cohabits and decide, oh, no, we don't want to get married. Mm. When you ask them why, they say, we don't want to spoil it. Mm. So it looks like marriage is a spoiler. Mm. No, but if the two people going mm. into marriage, mm. going with the right tools, the right knowledge, mm. the right skills, Absolutely. The, the preparedness mm. and willingness to make the marriage work, right, like we'll see good, 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 good results. Like that one. They will get good results. Right? Very important. Yeah. And what this means is that it doesn't matter what happened to your parents. If you study their errors and learn preparedness, you can't turn things around. I've seen a couple today that over maybe approaching that maybe 22nd year wedding anniversary, going strong. In fact, they are mentoring thousands of couples globally. Guess what? Both of them came from broken homes. The husband, the wife came from broken homes. But that made them even more resolved to find what makes it work. Today, they are a role model. So the, the lives of our parents is not a death sentence to our, to our yes. marriage. The relationship of our parents is not a death sentence to our own marriage, all right, if you are willing to do the right thing. Okay, so we're just throwing some tips we think you can add to. Yes. If you're in that place where probably your spouse is complaining, mm. or oh, I've had enough of this marriage, mm. I think we should go our separate way. Mm. Or you think this something we need to work on. Mm. We, we can improve on it. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have come with some things and we know if you adopt this, some of these things, you will see a change. Okay. And one of it, which we like to put forward is what type of marriage do you want? Mm. This is something that should have happened before marriage. Mm. Okay. But here you are in marriage. You just realized you never did that. It's not too late to do it. Absolutely. Really. Let's sit down and talk mm. about it. What type of marriage do we want? You know, visualize that mm. marriage. I like the way you say you you would usually say it to make it practical. Today, what's today's date? If today is the twelfth of August, twenty twenty three, mm -hmm. for instance, by twelfth August, twenty twenty five, what kind of experience would I sincerely want to enjoy in the mm. marriage? Would I sincerely want to have with someone I say is the love of my life? Mm. Now, at this point, forget that you're not in talking terms. Forget that there's a lot of pain. There's a lot mm. of hurt. Let's just envision what we want to see first and then get get into the plan. Mm. Some other people may ask us envision. I don't have time for that. Mm. The truth about it is you're already envisioning how worse you can get as we speak. You're already envisioning what she's likely to do or what is likely to do and how you will react. That it does not happen. You are envisioning, you are visualizing the worst of the relationship. And whatever you visualize, that's the duration you're going to go because you are creating an experience. Mm -hmm. Every human being on this planet has been given the opportunity to be a co-creator with God. So every experience that we have, we are a co-creator to it by our reaction or inaction or proaction or being proactive. We are taking action one way or the other. We are also all co-creators. Mm -hmm. So if you decide to pause and say, rather than me thinking about how worse it can get, oh, how she's going to say something to me, how he's going to say something to me, how I'm going to react, what I'm going to do, how I'm going to hide this, what I'm going to do in return to show her that I'm also tough. All those pro plays that you are doing, you turn it around, spin it on its head and make it something personal, something positive. You can imagine how that can begin to pull you. Of course, you're not going to make sense because that's not your default program. You're not used to this. You're used to doing that probably on some other project, but not on your marriage. But you have a key role to play. That it, like the saying goes, it takes two to tango. So you have to sit and really visualize what kind of a marriage do I want and create the kind of experience, How what you're going to say to her in the morning, what she's going to say back to you. And you just kind of walk through the whole day like that and hold that image on you in your mind every morning, every evening. That is one of the ways to begin to start that journey of creating the kind of marriage you want, not what you don't want. We all know what we don't want, but very few of us actually know for sure what we do want, because that's harder than we think. Yeah. I, I, I love that point. Mm. Yeah? Deciding on the type of marriage you want. Mm. The next point is for you to decide what steps you need to take Absolutely. to achieve that marriage. Absolutely. Now I've designed my future, my marriage. Mm. I've designed mm. the way I want it. Mm. Then what steps do I need to take? Mm. One of the steps I think you must take at mm. that point is to change how you think. Mm. How do you think about mm. marriage? How are you thinking about your marriage? Mm. 
do you think oh this one every time you think about your marriage do you think oh it's a dead marriage mm. it's dead there's mm. nothing there mm. uh, some people have this special disposition of i'm just waiting for the kids to leave home mm. with that kind of uh, disposition you will not see anything good in that marriage absolutely your, what you have envisioned will not kick in mm. no it, it doesn't matter even if you keep putting it before you morning, evening, like mm. we're encouraging, mm. it won't happen. Mm. But you've got to think, about, change how you think about marriage. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. Mm. Okay? What I think of my marriage is what it becomes. Absolutely. Because my thoughts drive my life. Absolutely. They drive my actions. Absolutely. So as I continue to think about mm. them, I start acting in ways that align to my thoughts. Mm. The moment you create that thought, what follows it is often your habits. All right. So habit like looking out for your spouse's best interest. So you have to ask yourself, for this kind of a marriage, well, how do I need to think? She's talked about that. Now, how do I need to act? What do I need to do? Some other people will say that, like, why should I be the one to initiate? She's not doing anything. Everything I've done in the past, she's not responded positively. No, you're not doing it for her to respond. You're doing it because that's who you are. You are playing your own part in creating the kind of marriage you want. You know, sometimes people say to themselves, "Why do I need? Why do I need to work hard? It doesn't matter anyway. Mm -hmm. The organizations will not recognize me. You're not doing it for the organization to recognize you. You are doing it because you are an excellent person because you have good work ethics. It's not based on reward. I'm not trying to be a man because people will reward me. That's who I am. I just leave out being a man." All right, so if I'm saying, oh, I will not be like a man because people are not appreciating me, then I don't know my identity. I don't know who I am. So if that's not my identity, then I should better be who I am. So if that's your true identity, work ethics, it doesn't matter whether people appreciate it. Of course, you appreciate it when people do, but that will not change the core of who you are because that's who I am. Who I am is this person. I am Victor Akuna. It doesn't matter what people say, what people think about that. That is who I am. And you have to be true to that. So if that's who you are, you have to keep showing that love, keep communicating that love. One thing people cannot refuse is love. Everybody is afraid of rejection. Mm. But when people know that someone loves them truly for who they are, they are going to respond. But that's the only universal language that anywhere in the world people understand. The language of love. By love, I mean when you care about someone unconditionally, not irrespective of their own behavior. So you are not, your behavior to the person is not based on what they are doing. Mm. So you are communicating that I love you. You are showing act of gratitude, of favor, of kindness, irrespective of their own behavior. That's true love. Very few. We call it the agape love, you know, to use the Greek word to differentiate because love has different types. But the agape love, where you love someone unconditionally, not based on condition. What kind of condition? Their behavior. Okay, that's that's it. Okay, so you can take what he's just shared yeah. a step further mm -hmm. uh, by also changing your circle. Absolutely. All right, because we're mm. often influenced by our association, mm. really powerful. Mm. You could have all these great intentions, make all these adjustments, mm. build them into habits. Mm. But sometimes it just takes the people around you mm. to you know, put one or two influences before you. Right? Absolutely. The whole thing comes crashing. Mm. So you've got to intentionally put mm. your circle mm. with your association mm. get marriages that you love mm. in front of you mm. the kind of people you feel are doing marriages right now in saying this i must also throw in a caveat because sometimes some people pick some mentors mm. mentor couples in mm. that sense and then they get disappointed mm. when maybe sometime in the future they say oh they're going their separate way mm. Yeah, but that's that shouldn't be what you focus on. Yes. If you're going their separate ways, it's all right. They choose to walk out. Mm. Let's pick somebody else mm. who we know, okay, is doing it right. Mm. You know, but do you know what? The greatest encouragement should come from within. Absolutely. Because I've created that marriage that I want, mm. the type of marriage I want. I should also encourage myself with that to say that this experience will be wonderful for us. Mm. We need to have this kind of experience. Okay. I'd like to enjoy this. Absolutely. You know, it, it, that's why we encourage that you make it something really tangible mm. so you can see it through your mind's eye when you can really feel it and you're able to tell i know one or two people who are also having this experience hey you, you just carry on mm. whether some people stop along the way or not mm. we keep encouraging ourselves you want mm. to react to that no no i'm perfectly fine the way you put it so the next one we'd like to talk about is you need to develop your you need to 
put in place your development plan, your self-development plan. The reason why that is important is sometimes people say, oh, like there is this guy that, you know, I've watched his growth. Uh, he's a footballer. By the footballer, I mean soccer. His name is Mbappe. I think it's, is it Killian? Mbappe. Yeah, Mbappe, Killian or something his name. So I've watched his, while he was just a teenager, he had images on the wall of Ronaldo, of Messi. He was dreaming and dreaming and dreaming. And you can look it up, Google it. And dreaming, he wanted to be one of the best players in the world. And he had idols, people you were looking forward to. That's just an example of having the right people around you. People who kind of model what you want to become. So, but one thing that he didn't stop, he didn't, he didn't just fold his hand and just say, you know what, that's what I want to be. He developed his own plan. Mm -hmm. He had very strict regimen, training and learning from people and watching videos and learning and training and learning. Today is one of the most celebrated footballers in the world. Very, very well celebrated, well paid, you know, doing very well. And that just shows you that these things work. These things work. So it's not enough to you to say, I want this kind of marriage. You've created the image, you've put pictures on the wall, on the vision board everywhere to remind you of where you want to be. But you have to keep improving yourself. You have to read books, you have to watch YouTube videos. Our own con uh, content, for example, or if you're married, just go to the section where we to put things on on intimacy, on marriage, and just watch things like that that will help you become the best. And if you're single, we have a section, just a playlist on single, just click on it and put it on auto play. So you just keep loading and loading. This is how you develop yourself. There is no magic anywhere. You have to be a key role. You have to play a key role in your own transformation because transformation is an inside job. If you don't get it here, you can't get it outside, no matter what you do. If you don't get it in your heart, you don't get it outside. Forget about people who are faking it. Many people are faking it. They don't have a good marriage. They're just faking it. And, and that's what most people are focusing on. It doesn't matter what anybody's doing out there. It's what you are doing in your private moments that will determine what your life will look like at the end of the day. So hold yourself accountable. Don't hold other people accountable. You may not even know it about you. Oh, oh after all, these people said they are this. Oh, that person. I mean, I, there are many celebrities. Uh, marriages I used to look at, I was like, oh, these people. And then when they turned out not to be, I've, I was disappointed. So I absolutely understand what she was saying. When you look up to someone and you're like, oh, I thought these people are like, I don't want to mention names. But at the end of the day, I realized that I have to hold myself accountable. I can't just, you know, allow someone's decision to now decide what I would want to do. Okay? Yeah. All right, so when you've done all of this, the last one we'll throw in there, mm. unless you have another point, yeah. is bring your spouse on board. Yes. You are a team. Yes. There are two of you doing this marriage. Mm. So there's only an extent you alone can drive it. Mm. Uh, you desire it, but you need to sell this vision, vision mm. and what you've envisioned, rather, the kind of marriage you've envisioned to your spouse. Absolutely. Your spouse needs to know about it. Mm. You're not doing it alone. So let this person, and that's why what we say, make it as tangible as possible. Mm. When your spouse reads it, it comes alive. Mm. You know, and your spouse is like, wow, okay, I would like, like that. If you've really had a very bad experience, your spouse may be saying, <laughs> you know, more like laughing, like, does this, does, this, does this man even know what he's talking mm. about? Like this kind of marriage. Mm. Let me act like you. If it's mm. like an African person, the person's like, <laughs> where did this start but I mean it's possible Absolutely. so you need to keep Absolutely. selling the vision mm. until you get a buy in from mm. your spouse Se keep selling it but mm. you see because you the transformation like you were saying has, mm. has may have occurred in, within mm. you're now a different person mm. over time you start acting differently in mm. the marriage and mm. from suspicion the mm. person starts trusting you mm. you know the person goes from suspecting you to trusting you like oh, mm. okay this has been going on for a number of weeks now. Mm. I might as well. And then you would hopefully find out that mm. your spouse would start making some adjustments. Mm. Hopefully, mm. you know. But then you must bring your spouse on board. It's mm. just important to to substantiate that with example. So both of you have been having disagreement, and then you put some paste something on the wall of the kind of marriage you want, and you try to discuss it with your partner. They wouldn't be in on it because they don't want to have anything to do with you at the point. You put it on the wall, you put images on the wall, and you tell her or him what you are thinking, what you want, and what you are doing, and what you are going to do differently to achieve your point that you're going to do differently. And the person is watching you, and you know, 
before you go downstairs, you make your own food. You don't even care what your partner will eat. You just go down, you make your own food. You say, you have to, I'm going downstairs. Do you want the person of somebody will be like, <laughs> what's happening here? You know, but you have to be consistent. And then be consistent to what you the promises. You write your own part. I'm going to do this. 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 Write what you want them to do. You are going to do this. I'm going to do that. But focus on your bit and between because you that's what you have control. You can do your own part, whether they like it or not. It's probably if that stuff is in a strategic way that they can see it. They can see that you are actually making effort. With time, hopefully, as you said, the person will turn around, and that's what we want. Yeah. Focus on what you want. Don't focus on what you don't want. So what you don't want in this situation might be like, your partner will never change. It will always be the same. That's not what you want. What you want is your partner will make adjustments as you make adjustments. Because it's a dance. You know, as in a dance, you're dancing with someone, as you move backward, the person is supposed to move that way, depending on the type of dance anyway. But the key thing there is hold the face. Hold the face and stay in there. It is possible. It is yeah. possible. Any final words? So the final word I want to say today Mm. is that find time to have a me time okay find time to have a me time what do i mean by a me time is that time where you sit back you evaluate what you are doing is it even working this strategy that you are things that you are doing by auto response is it working so in your personal life review things in your marriage review things how can we make things better the way i'm doing resolving conflict is it working the way we have been managing our finances is it working the way we will be raising our children is even working. Reflect in your me time. Cut away from all the noise and withdraw and refresh. The second thing you do with your me time is to chart a new course. How do I want to, now that I've learned that this one is not working, what do I want to do about it? The third thing you like to do is to now take some time to rest and distress. Because stress has a way of clouding our creative thinking, blocking the, the creative pipe. All right? If I'm saying Don't forget marriage is beautiful. Only. And you can have the marriage of your dreams. Absolutely. You still can. Yeah. You can. All right. So if you're still yet to subscribe to if you're yet to subscribe to our YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it. So you're notified when we drop our content. So if you want someone to work with you on how to build intimacy into your relationship, like where you are right now, it's too painful for you to do it yourselves. So you need someone that will work with you to create financial intimacy, emotional intimacy, uh, marital intimacy, uh, no, sexual intimacy, uh, or probably you guys differ on your parenting style. You need someone that will work with you on any of these things I've mentioned, you know, hit us up, you know, through some of the link that we're going to be leaving in the description section. And let's have a chat about it. Let's see how we can work together, okay? Okay, until we come your way again, you take care of yourself. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.